A Brief History of Oppression of Native Americans by Rebecca Lassen. Native Americans have been oppressed since Columbus set foot in the New World in 1492. From his first day on land, he gathered natives as his servants and saw them as lower than him. From then on, the ideology that white Europeans were better than the Native Americans encountered in this New World was held on to. Natives were sold into slavery and beaten. They were forced to convert to Christianity and were exposed to many new deadly diseases. This would become a trend for Native Americans as Europeans continued to come to the New World and settle there. Columbus committed genocide, yet he is widely celebrated in the United States for discovering America. Over 200,000 people of the Taino tribe were killed as a result of colonization within 60 years of Columbus landing. As more Europeans traveled to America, Native Americans were pushed further west, being forced to leave their lands and homes. In 1830, the ideology that Europeans that European Americans were better than Native Americans was institutionalized through President Andrew Jackson and his Indian Removal Act. By 1835, over 17,000 Cherokee and other tribe members were forced from their homes with little to no possessions. It is estimated that around 4,000 Native Americans died on the Trail of Tears from hunger, exposure, and disease. In the late 1800s, Americans began moving further west as a result of manifest destiny, or the belief that it was their God-given direction that they were supposed to move west and settle there. Rather than remove the Native Americans again, lawmakers decided that it was, quote, cheaper to give them education than to fight them, unquote. Native children were taken to boarding schools where they were forced to abandon all of their culture. They were forbidden from wearing uh, traditional dress and speaking their native languages. They were given new Christian names to replace their names that they were given at birth. They were forced to leave behind their religious practices and adopt Christian beliefs. Children were exposed and susceptible to illnesses like the flu and tuberculosis, and many died at the boarding schools. The goal of these boarding schools was to, quote, kill the Indian but save the man, unquote. Only four states in the U.S. include the history of these boarding schools in their curriculum. Today, 87% of references in textbooks to Native Americans refer to events that occurred before 1900, enforcing the ideology that Native Americans and issues surrounding them are ancient history. America's education system is failing its Native American students, and the statistics speak for themselves. Only 10% of Native American seniors in the 2016 school year were proficient in math. Native American students are also disciplined twice as much as their white peers. Only one state uses the word genocide when referring to Native American history, while other states claim that conflict with Native Americans was handled reasonably rather than educate their students on the brutal history of Native American oppression. In the 2016 school year, less than two-thirds of tribal members enrolled as seniors graduated. Because of the limited representation Native American students experience in the classroom, they often feel alienated by their peers and teachers. Children are more likely to succeed in schools when they learn about their culture and language, but this is something that has been suppressed and hidden for hundreds of years for Native Americans. The current U.S. Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, recently proposed a budget that would cut over $4 billion from programs that support Native American students. Our country is in desperate need of laws that protect and advocate for Native Americans' rights and their children's education. Because of the lack of representation and discussion about Native American history and current struggle, Many people openly appropriate Native American culture through costumes, media, and sports teams' mascots. This blatant disrespect for Native American culture damages any potential relationships and progress with a group that has been systematically oppressed for hundreds of years. In order to change the pattern of oppression against Native Americans, we must recognize our prejudices, discriminations, and stereotypes and make an effort to change them. We need to elect Native American representatives so they can have a voice in our government, and we need to listen to them as they speak up for themselves and try to heal the hundreds and hundreds of years of oppression that they have endured 
since Columbus landed in 1492.